this is my friend Delane of the Copenhagen Voice. Although the Second World War closed 65 years ago, there is still a lot of research being done and books published about um, the Nazis and their dreams of the Third Reich and what their consequences were for the world in the form of war and for Jews and gypsies and many others in the form of the Holocaust. With me is Gideon Greif, who has written a book which is in English called We Wept Without Tears about the, the Jewish Sonderkommando from Auschwitz. Mr. Greif, could you please tell us what the Sonderkommando was and what function it had? Well, the Sonderkommando in Auschwitz-Birkenau was a group of Jewish prisoners who were compelled to be the workers of a death factory. Um, in other words, they had to do all the black work of the death industry, but I have to emphasize immediately that none of them have ever killed one person. The killing, the murder, the guessing, always, with no exception, was always made by the Germans. All the other works, compulsory, was made by this group of Jews, mainly Jews. There were a few Poles and a few Russians in this commando, but it was mainly a Jewish commando, working squad. All the other works, except the murder, were done by the Jews. <coughs> How many were there in the Sunday commando? It depends when. At the beginning, there were six. At the end of the process, towards the arrival of the Hungarian Jews, there were almost 900. And it is a huge command. What um, time period are we talking about, and how many prisons were there going through? We Auschwitz? are talking about four years, from 1940 to 44. Um, so at the beginning, it was a relatively small commando, but as the final solution became realistic, and many transports of Jews were deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau, the number of workers in this factory. Uh, was growing. I, I'm not using the word factory just because it sounds uh, nicer, because it is a real it factory. An industry. All what you can imagine about factories uh, was there. There were only two basic differences between any normal factory you know here in Denmark for anything and a factory called Auschwitz or Treblinka or Majdanek or Sobibor or Belgius or Herno. The first difference, basic difference, is the raw material which in this case was human, as long as trains arrived, the factory could function. And the other basic difference is the end product, which is in this case ashes, human ashes. But all other procedures and uh, rules, all is very, very similar to each normal factory existing in the world. It was an assembly line of death. You say they did not actually execute anybody, but what mm -hmm. functions did they have? Well, since this is an assembly line, you know what assembly line is, you gather the product from station to station. The first station was the undressing room, where they welcomed the Jews uh, which were uh, going to die there, to be murdered by the Germans. So they had to um, tell them what to do, not always. Mainly they preferred not to speak to the Jews in order not to tell them the truth. If you want, we can elaborate on this later, why they did, why they behaved in this way. After the death caused by the Germans, they had to pull out the corpse of the murdered Jews from the gas chambers, uh, bring them to the elevator in two of the buildings, or pull them out and bring them to the uh, ovens. In the other case of number four or five, there were two uh, couples of, of crematorials, two, three, four, five. It's technically different. And uh, then to um, a third group. They were divided into groups. The third group was responsible for pulling out the golden teeth from the mouth of the uh, murdered and to cut the uh, women's hair and to look for any valuables still on the body, like rings, earrings, etc. The fourth group, uh, cynically called the Heizer, the Heizer, the heaters, uh, had to throw the corpse into the ovens, which were heated under the temperature of uh, 1,200 centigrade. And the fifth group had to take everything with what's left from the body, small bones, small pieces of the body, which do not burn even under such high temperature, and to crush it into ashes. 
one of the very central principles of the Germans doing their crimes is not to leave any evidence of their crimes. So on one hand they are very enthusiastic to kill as many Jews as possible and parallel on the other hand very systematically and very obsessively to eliminate all remnants of the crime. One uh, parallel to the other. They, were, they knew exactly that they were doing a crime. Did the Jews in the, the Sunday Commando know what the camp was all about? When they arrived, they had no idea, of course. I think many of them did not hear the, the word Auschwitz before, because uh, the Germans were very obsessive in keeping it secret. And even when they were chosen for the Sonderkommand, at least in the first minute, the word said nothing to them. Um, the Germans tried hard not to tell them what the purpose of this uh, recruiting is. So they told them, you, 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 come with us, and brought them to the special barrack of the Sonderkommando, which was always isolated. And when they came there, in a minute they heard from the old ones to which hell they arrived, but it was too late to do anything. There was no reason for selecting person A from person B. Um, we will never know what the <laughs> criterion was. In this uh, commando only men served, but you know, not necessarily old or not necessarily young. I found out the range from 15 and a half to 43, which means a big variety, mm -hmm. and not necessarily strong uh, members, if I imagine Yosef Zakar, who still is alive in Israel, he's 91 years old. He is a very uh, small person, very uh, slim. He is not strong physically, and still he was chosen. And so, um, you know, it was arbitrary. You never know why they chose this and not the other. Of the up to 900 uh, Jewishness under commander at the end, right. how many have survived Auschwitz, the camp itself? about 100, and even this was not the plan of the Germans. In principle, there should be none of them alive, uh, in order not to tell what they have seen. In German it was called Geheimträger, which means the bearers of secrets, and uh, each bearer of secrets has to disappear because he can tell the truth. It was just a miracle, or a negligence of the Germans that such a relatively big group uh, uh, stayed alive. It was not according to the plan. The background is the chaos which uh, prevailed uh, uh, near the 18th of January 1945 when thousands of survivors were evacuated from Auschwitz-Birkenau and the subcamps. And when the last under command of prisoners realized this, they were uh, smart enough to mingle among the thousands leaving the camp, and that's the way they saved their lives. And that's the way I could find them and interview them in order to document this important chapter in the history of the Holocaust. But was there a list of names that the, the Nazis had no, kept? No, no, there was no list. So how, how so my work was, in a way, a detective work. I had really to find out, to hear. People knew about my research. They called me. In some cases, too late. I'll give you one example. Is it recording? Yes. Uh, one case. Uh, 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 when I was almost finished with the first part of my uh, research, which refers to the Israeli survivors, and I got a phone call that there is one person called Baruch Bloom living in a city, but yeah, not far from me, 10 minutes by car. And so I immediately called her, and his wife said, don't come, it's too late. He is still alive, but he had a stroke a few weeks ago. He can't speak, but I was stubborn. I said, I will come and I will bring one of his comrades who is still alive, they worked together in the same crematorium, and the, which I did, but unfortunately, he could say one sentence, which he repeated 30 or 40 times. I was cleaning the boots of the Germans. I was cleaning the boots of the Germans. Nothing more. And I was thinking, if I would be here half a year before, he was such a good source for information. So my, my research was, in a way, saving this important document and preventing its lost from the, from the world. Because when they are dead, nobody can replace them. Nobody.